28 years ago on this day, President Ronald Reagan issued his memorable challenge to the leader of the Soviet Union to end once and for all the division of Berlin, a wall that had cut into lives and families after World War II. You know the speech. Now get the background. Our guest is former advisor to President Reagan and former deputy ambassador to the United Nations. Also the author of Reagan at Reykjavik, 48 Hours That Ended the Cold War. Let's welcome Kenneth Adelman to Midpoint. Ken, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. Ken, when you look at what Ronald Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall, to those people who knew him, who were close to them, I would have to imagine that no one was surprised. The tone of it, the way it was delivered, the resolve that was behind it, it's exactly the kind of man that everybody knew had this in him. Uh, I think that that's true, but uh, a lot of people were disappointed. It was a very interesting case, and it's a section that I'm most proud of in the, uh, the book that you referred to, Reagan at Reykjavik, because it shows Reagan's leadership, and uh, it's inspiring, and uh, it's refreshing to see a leader. What happened was that uh, Reagan didn't want to go to Berlin. He had been there twice as president before. Cole really wanted him to go. It was the 750th anniversary of, the, um, of Berlin, the establishment of Berlin. And so um, he reluctantly decided to go. Then in uh, a month and a half before this date, he met with the speechwriters in the White House for a very short period of time. And the head speechwriter, Tony Dolan, says, well, you're going to Berlin. Uh, anything in particular you want to say? Reagan just shook his head and he says, I guess I'd like to say tear down this wall. <laughs> uh, so he had been thinking about this. And a civil war broke out after that. It wasn't between us and the Soviets. It was within the White House that basically the uh, staff in the White House, including the National Security Advisor Colin Powell at the time, uh, were firmly against this. The White House Chief of Staff was firmly against this. The whole State Department under George Shultz was firmly against this. Everybody thought, A, it would hurt the arms control talks that I was uh, in charge of. Number two, it would hurt his relationship to Gorbachev that at Reykjavik had warmed up considerably. And so it was a loser. It was a total loser. But it would seem and like maybe that was the resolve. It would seem like maybe everybody telling him don't do it that Ronald Reagan <laughs> said, okay, that's the reason why I'm going to do it. <laughs> I know. But for somebody who usually wants to please everybody and get along with every everything, uh, it was remarkable that he just, um, you know, he basically ignored the fight in the government. And then on the, in the limo, on the way to the speech itself, the deputy chief of staff of the White House, Ken Duberstein, turned and said, Mr. President, you know, a lot of people, he meant nearly everybody, is kind of against that. And especially mentioning Gorbachev's name. And Reagan was kind of looking out the window, daydreaming at the time. He turned and he says, well, Ken... I think it's the right thing to do. And he got up on the podium. And if you uh, look at the speech now, you'll notice that the main objection, uh, not just tear down this wall, which is very provocative, but using Gorbachev's name once. So uh, when he gives the speech, he doesn't use Gorbachev's name once. He repeats it. He uses it twice to say, you didn't like me using the name? Here's the name again. I got about a minute left here, and the thing that catches me is when you talk about this and you wonder if the speech actually had an impact on the wall coming down, there are some people who would say, actually, no, it could be considered great theater, but that was not the thing that did it, correct? Uh, uh, people say that. People are dying 28 years later and three uh, decades after Ronald Reagan to deprive him of any kind of... Um, you know, greatness of any kind of authenticity, of any kind of leadership. And they can try, and uh, the fact is, he was a great leader, and he was very authentic, and uh, he was absolutely essential to ending the Cold War. But that's the and point here, I guess. You're convinced that after all this, and knowing the man as well, and being so close to it, that yeah, there may have been a protest on the East, guards may have been involved, but still... Reagan saying this and saying it on the stage he did really tipped the scales. Well, what was awfully important about it was it was part of his philosophy of delegitimizing the Soviet system. And he started it at his very first press conference in the White House where he said the Soviets lie, cheat, and steal to further their ends. 
Next year was the evil empire. Next year it was uh, communism is the on the ash heap of history. He was constant in this flow. So this speech is no uh, individual, you know, taken out of context. The whole thing was Reagan had decided that the Soviet Absolutely. system was illegitimate, and the Soviet people and the people of Eastern Europe. Uh, at that time decided it was illegitimate Made that well. decision and he stuck by it. Reagan and Reykjavik, 48 Hours That Ended the Cold War, a brilliant book. Ken Adelman, thanks so much for joining us. It's a great story. It is indeed. Thank you so much. Coming up next, The Political Punching Bag.